What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course you are watching TWA Motorsports and today, yes guys, we are doing something that I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting on and we are gonna get at least the rear wheels on today. So why haven't we put them on? Well, I told you guys in the last video on this truck, I wanted to redo the brakes while I had the wheels off. So the plan today is we're gonna get the brakes out of there. We're gonna be replacing them with an upgraded set um, basically just pads and rotors, nothing, um, nothing crazy. I'm not going to replace the calipers because they seem to be working. However, I am going to pull the calipers off and I'm going to paint them. Uh, even though, look, you're probably never going to see them unless you look really hard. It's just, you guys know how I am sometimes, but either way, we need to get this thing off the ground and we need to get the rear wheels off. So I just didn't want to do this twice because I know that taking the rear wheels off with the duals is going to be a lot more work than just a single tire. So I'm going to jack this thing up from the rear end. I'm going to get it supported with probably some jack stands in random places. And then guys, we're going to pop these wheels off and take a look at what we're dealing with on the brakes. It should be relatively simple. It's a disc brake rear end on this truck actually, which is nice and it's a dual disc. So you guys, if you remember uh, quite a while back, I did that conversion on the green truck over there and it made a big difference. Now, uh, I just didn't want to put this back together with old brakes. It's got quite a few miles on it. So let's get started by jacking the rear end up. And I'm guessing that's seven eighths, which is pretty standard. Let's get the wheels off. Now that we got the wheels off, we are on to the brakes. Now, I'm planning on taking the um, caliper off the bracket, all right? Now, the downside is it's a Torx, which I hate. Oh, I hate these. They always, I think this is the original brake. Uh, and the reason I think that is you see these keepers, I seriously doubt somebody took the time to put these back on. We're gonna roll these off real quick. This is just, in the factory, they do this to keep the um, rotor in place while they're mounting everything. So this is what lends me to believe, and these brakes are, they're okay. They're not, yeah, there's quite a bit of pad life left, but we're still gonna be upgrading, guys. I just, I can't not do it. The other thing is staring at that leaf spring not painted all nice like the frame makes me a little crazy. So we may touch up on that. I don't know. Uh, but let's go ahead and get these off. I'm just going to use a pair of snippers to snip those. It's just way easier on you if you do it that way. And then I'm going to go see which size Torx this is and see if we can bust the uh, top loose and the bottom loose. The bottom is going to be a little more challenging because um, this is lowered now and so the leaf pack kind of gets in the way. So we'll just kind of see. Little good news, little bad news. It is a T55. It actually loosened up relatively easy up top. But the problem is the leaf pack is in the way. I cannot get to it. So we're going to have to yank it off all as one unit and then take it apart after. Not a huge deal. It's just not kind of how I wanted to do it. Um, so here's what we need to do. We need to get the 11 millimeter out that holds the brake line in place. I'm going to do that first. It is an 11 millimeter. I'm going to use my impact, knock it off, and then I'm going to basically put that in a baggie just to kind of keep the fluid off the floor and whatnot. You, look, you're going to spill a little. It's not a big deal. But let's go ahead, knock that loose. And then the actual caliper brackets, so these right here, these are 18 millimeter, and I can get to both of those. So we're just going to knock those loose and um, get it off that way. It's just not how I normally like to take it apart. We can... Um, we're just going to have to tighten it to, we're going to have to put it together off the truck and we're going to have to put it, uh, take it off together. Just like I said, not really how I love doing it, but let's, uh, let's knock all those things out and get this out of place. We were able to get the 11 millimeter and you can see I got it bagged up. It's going to be leaking fluid and chances are that bag will overflow, but we got it off there. Uh, and the two 18s guys actually with a breakover bar here, we were able to get those off relatively easy. And then I used a ratcheting wrench. It's an 18 millimeter is what it is uh, to get it the rest of the way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and yank the rotor off and get it out of the way because we are not gonna be needing that. Um, we are replacing the rotor. Uh, the caliper, you look at the brakes, guys. It, I think it has had brakes. There's, well, look, a majority of your braking comes from the front. So chances are it may not have had brakes, but the pads look pretty good. I don't know if they're original or not, but, um, and you can see we've got a little bit of brake fluid on the ground. That's not a big deal. 
let's go ahead pull this caliper or sorry the rotor off and get it out of the way that could possibly be the easiest rotor removal i've ever done especially when you have a a parking brake in the back it uh came right off which is crazy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to clean this up with a little brake clean and i may um kind of scuff this up a little bit and paint this area right here and like i said i may get a little on the leafs packs since we've got an open area i'll let you guys know if i do that but for the time being i'm going to go ahead and go to the other side and do this exact same process and then i think the next thing you'll see because you guys don't want to see me clean this all off and um coat it i think the next thing you'll see is us taking apart the bracket and the actual caliper itself now you can see that i've got the brackets and the calipers apart now and uh, guys i actually just used my impact and that t55 to get those apart but we need to further disassemble. And before I start cleaning these up and painting them, I don't wanna to have to compress them once they're painted, right? Let's get the fluid out of them now. So what I like to use is an old brake pad, especially when they're dual piston like this. Let's get this thing compressed. It's probably gonna spit out some fluid. That's fine. But anyway, once we get that accomplished, I'm going to use my um, metal, I don't really know what I'd call it, like uh, kind of to rough these things up. And then I'm going to go over it again with a scotch bright. So, holy cow. Getting close. see like I said probably some fluid come out I'm also I think I have some caps to cap these things off that's the downside about painting used ones is your uh, you got fluid coming out of them you know and if fluid gets mixed up with your paint believe me it's not gonna stick get it all the way in I'm, I want them all the way in all right, I think we're good there. So, like I said, I'm gonna take this guy and... Kind of rough them up. Get some of the old junk out of the way, and these should be relatively easy to do. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in these areas. I'm not even gonna paint those areas down uh, when we get to that point, but I'm gonna do both the pads and the calipers, or the pads, the brackets and the calipers. We'll get this out of the way and get the hardware out. I should, I'm hoping guys, keep your hardware around and make sure that your new set comes with it, it should. But if it doesn't, we wanna make sure that we have it. So I'm gonna pop these out of here, maybe. And uh, I'm gonna scuff this up in the same manner with the same tool. Um, and I'm going to be probably replacing these. You should also get new boots. But these are the slide pins that are actually part of the slide. So we'll re-grease these when we go back together once they're all painted. Um, I'm probably going to clean all the grease off of this and start, with, start from scratch. I'm also going to clean the heads off. And I might daub some paint on those while I'm painting the leaf spray. So just to catch you guys up on what I did, I did go ahead and coat with POR 15, the leaf springs. I did as best I could. Um, man, it makes a mess. I also did the hub here just a little bit. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm using that same POR 15 on the brackets. So you see the brackets right here. I'm going to paint those with POR 15 and I'm gonna use the POR 15 caliper paint for the actual calipers themselves. But I'm gonna go ahead and get a coat on these. I'll probably have to put a second coat on just depending on how good it covers. And uh, then we will go from there. Now the caliper brackets that I painted with the POR15, just a straight POR15, it's not the caliper. Caliper. Yeah, they look pretty good. And so now we're gonna move our attention 
Um, this is all dry now, but we're gonna move our attention to the actual calipers themselves. Guys, I've been beating them up with my um, wire brush on my grinder. I've hit them with the Scotch Brite. I've clay barred them a couple times, or clay barred them. I've used a, a Scotch Brite on them a couple times. So now we're actually gonna use POR 15 caliper paint um, on them. So I've got, it in a, I've got it in a different container and mainly because guys, it's an absolute pain to get the lid off of POR 15 if you ever let it dry. And so what I generally do is I kind of break it up in different containers and uh, that's kind of my way of being able to get in it again. But we're gonna put a coat uh, and maybe two, these things were already black. So chances are, if I get a good enough coat on these, I may be able to get away with just a single coat. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to see. I'm gonna try to keep it out of the area where the brake line goes on. So I'm really not gonna coat that area much, if at all. And so I'm just gonna work my way around this with a brush. Like I said, guys, this POR 15, it spreads around so easy. So uh, I just, I really like this paint for calipers and I can close it off and use it again if I want to, which is another plus. I like the G2 stuff, like I've said before, but it has a hardener in it and you've just got, you know, a limited window to do this. So let's get this coated. I won't make you guys watch me paint this whole thing because it's going to be, uh, it's going to start to get heavy after a while, I think. But I will give you a shot of it after I get the first coat on and we'll go from there. So we now have a coat and guys, I actually think I'm just going to do one coat on these things. Uh, like I said, they were black before. And so I'm going to clean up that mounting surface right there. This one leaked a little fluid so chances are the paint's not going to stick like right there but look it happens you know unless you're using new ones but i didn't coat the inners like i said there's really no point and if you get a set that are powder coated they're never done there but uh i'm gonna let these dry overnight but we can move on to our new rotor so guys no surprise i like power stop it works well um we'll probably well i say probably we'll be definitely doing powder stop or power stop uh, power stop when we get to the front but i need to get this up into place now remember because of the leaf pack and it looks a lot better too after i coated it but because of the leaf pack being in the way um, i can't get the outer bolt in so we're gonna have to wait look at all the fluid that leaked out holy cow uh, we're gonna have to wait until um we can put those calipers together and swing it all up with a bracket but in the meantime i am going to go ahead and get this out of the box and put it into place and i'm probably going to secure it for now with at least two lug nuts just to keep it you know kind of stationary when later on we go to assemble the brakes they make it pretty dummy proof by putting rear passenger side on there but let's see how it goes in there, there we go nice i actually don't even know that i need a lug nut that's staying on there pretty snug Man, that looks good. Let's take a picture for the thumbnail, guys, when we get that uh, when we get that other one on, but or when we get the caliper on, but that looks so much better in that inner fender. Here we are with them dry after a day or two of setting. And guys, what I'm doing here is I've got a small chisel and I'm trying to knock the boots out because these are a little bit different of a slide boot. Right, so the actual bolt itself slides and it tightens down in the front edge. So you could do this before or after you paint them. I probably should have done it before, but then again, you get paint on it. So I don't necessarily know. And these aren't in terrible shape, but look, it came with new ones. I'm gonna put new ones in it. It just may take me a while to hammer these out. You may be able to get in the inside, actually, and pry them out. I didn't even think about that. Sure didn't seem like it. So I'm going to continue around the outside until I get this loose, and then I'll show you kind of what the new one looks like. So actually, when I put it on the ground instead of my lap, it came out really easy. This is what it looks like. This is the old one. Once I got it started with a little chisel, 
it came the rest of the way out. But our new pads come with new ones. And I always think it's a good idea, just like the hardware and whatnot. Look guys, if it comes with it, put it in. Um, those boots could have 200,000 miles on them. They could be cracked and you just can't see it. And you don't want any moisture in that guy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this to kind of tap it home. What I may do is use the other, just use a flat blade screwdriver, kind of get it started here. Shouldn't take much. probably a tool for this I just don't have it there we go got that one in so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all four of these guys so I've got three more to do and then once we get that accomplished we're gonna move on to putting the hardware in we've got all four of them swapped out now so we need to put our new hardware in guys um, Look, they're side specific. There's a wide side and a thin side. I'm gonna go ahead and snap these into place. You may have a little bit of issue since you did put some, I mean, if you coated them like I did, but looks pretty good. Should have four, obviously, for two for each side. And that's it on the hardware on these things. Um, not much to them. But remember, we have to assemble this off the truck and put it all on as one unit because we don't have the ability to get to that bolt, that um, T55 that goes in here. So I'm gonna assemble both these real quick. And then I guess we're gonna take the calipers off that are up there, we're up there drying. And uh, get the pads and everything assembled all at one time now I've chosen to go with the extreme pads um, from power stop that match the obviously the rotors that we bought but they are different okay so there's two sets these wear indicators there's only one and then the other one has two okay so I believe the two indicator one would go on the inside but the shapes are the same they may fit both ways just generally that's the way it works is the wear it generally the wear indicator goes in the back but sometimes uh, if you got multiples you may have one on the front so now we can grab the caliper and, and uh, put a little grease I'm gonna put a little caliper grease where they slide on both of these I'm gonna get them loaded up in one of our brackets and uh, kind of swing the caliper in place the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little grease on this section um, on the caliper and the reason I do that is kind of keeps the the actual caliper itself from rattling. Let's just grab one here and show you what I'm talking about. So I wish, I kind of wish now I would have upgraded to some newer calipers. But I'm going to put a little grease on the actual piston. I used to do this on the pad, but then it made a huge mess. So I'm going to put a little bit on both of these. And the boots and stuff, or the inners of this still look good, so I hope I'm not, I'm gonna put a little here too. I hope that it doesn't squeak or have issues. I don't think we'll have any problems with leaks. Put a little where that slides right there. I don't wanna get any on the pad. And then like I said, we're gonna, attempt to put in it just sucks we have to put it together like this but we're gonna put one in here I think that's the forward one so actually we need to flip that over and go in like this it's kind of a tricky situation because I don't think it'll go in the other way well maybe it will no yeah it definitely won't I pulled them both out the other way, so I may have to get this caliper out of my lap and do it. 
course I put my hand right in the grease. Try not to get any grease on your pad surface. Ooh, it's not one to work with me. Alright, I won't make you I won't make you guys watch me struggle. I'll get it in there one way or the other. Sometimes your new hardware will fight you. I think that's the situation I'm having here. There we go. All right, I got, I got one in. Just kind of had to go in at an angle. And I may be wrong, guys. The wear indicator may go on the other side from the looks of things. Looks like we may have a problem. I'll, let, me, let me mess with this for a little bit, and then I'll come back and let you know, because it looks like that wear indicator is going to hit if I put it there. So let's put it in the front, the double wear indicator in the front. This is why you should really take notes when you're taking stuff apart. Let's put the single wear indicator in the back. Look at that, how easy that was when you know what you're doing. Well, I don't know that it necessarily matters now that I look at it. Put them wherever they, uh, they fit. Now we need the caliper to slide on and we're gonna have to put grease on the slide pin. This thing got pretty heavy holding it. I'm gonna put grease, new grease on the slide pins. We're gonna get them started. At least that's the plan. Got grease on everything, guys. This caliper grease gets on everything. You can see I painted the top of these while I was doing the rest. Now if I can get lucky and keep my pads in place, I think we'll be okay. Who knows though. I'm gonna have to find the torque specs on those and hopefully I can get that torque down off the truck and then like I said swing the caliper in as one unit. That's, a, that's the plan anyway. Now that we've got it together guys I looked up the torque specs it's showing 74 foot-pounds so it's gonna be a little tough to get 74 on this. But I think we can do it. I'm gonna have to go back and forth here. But once we get that on, we're ready to put the caliper in place. And uh, I also painted the bolts for it. Whew, it's gonna be tough to get 74 on that, that's for sure. Definitely on that side, because it's wanting to, the caliper's wanting to pull up. And I may, I can get to one of them. Actually, this is the one I can get to on the truck. So let me get this down to 74. I'm gonna have to put a little more weight on it, I think. And then I'm gonna put it up in place. We gotta spread the brake pads apart, obviously, and use our 18 millimeters just to secure it. Now, we're also gonna be using some thread locker on the 18s that hold the bracket on. No thread locker in these, but definitely put thread locker in your 18 millimeters, but I'll show you that once we're on the truck. Now, just so you know, obviously, guys, your bleeder always goes up top. That's how you know you're right from left. But I've got the 18 started, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and snug one a little ways, a little further down. They're just relatively loose right now. Snug the bottom one down, snug the top one down, um, and then take one of them out, put some thread locker on it. I'm just using some blue. I don't really think you need red on this. 
Uh, so I'm gonna put some blue Loctite on it. I'm gonna torque this to 145 foot pounds. So um, that seems like a lot, but that's, that's the best spec I could find. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna tighten this down with like a ratcheting wrench to get it started. And then like I said, put the Loctite on and torque to 145. Now that we've got that tightened down, um, I went ahead and took, you know, I had a bag kind of holding the brake line fluid, even though it leaked through the bag. Um, but I got the original bolt out and guys probably should have upgraded brake lines at the same time, but I chose not to. But what we do need to do is we need to get our new crush washers in place. Uh, one on the bottom, one on the top. So I've got those. I'll try to list those in the description. Um, they're relatively common. Now I did notice that the one that comes out that hooks to the caliper is kind of a, uh, it's a triangle. And so these are circles. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my razor blade and kind of cleaning any rust off that is around the caliper. I don't know if you guys noticed how clean it was before, when we were getting ready to put that thing on, but um, I clean those up. I'm cleaning around the line and then just kind of cleaning them up with brake clean. But that is our next step. Let me grab these washers. Well, here's the old one so you guys can see. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. You got one that goes on the top and it should set pretty snug around this shaft and then another one that goes on the bottom that connects it. So once you tighten those up, it should crunch down and seal off any leaks, or at least that's what we're hoping, right? We now have this together, guys. Um, look, I put those washers in place like I was talking about, cleaned up the line a little bit, hooked it back up and torqued it to 30 foot pounds. So look, we're ready to start bleeding the brakes, which I'm gonna have to probably have somebody help me do and uh, we lost a lot of fluid, so just make sure you check your fluid. Um, and then there is a break-in uh, procedure on these, which uh, I don't know that I'll necessarily show you. It's on the box. It's like um, five stops, I think 35 to five, pretty aggressive. And then following that up with five stops from 40 to 10, a little less aggressive, and then driving around for two minutes without hitting the brakes at all. So we'll do that. Uh, I don't like I said I don't think I'll show you that in the video I've shown that in several videos in the past but guys this looks so much better with the leaf springs painted the new brakes I'm sure they're gonna stop better look like I said that the old brakes weren't necessarily bad but since we've got it all apart I thought it'd be a good time to replace it like I said I should have opted for new lines probably should have bought new calipers but those calipers are working and you know, nothing seemed ripped or torn on the inners so I think we're good but I think we are ready to move on to getting the adapters in place for the wheels. Now, as excited as I am, I don't want to put the wheels on until we bleed the brakes, just because I don't want to be trying to reach back there, getting that loose, tightening it, snugging it down and whatnot, making sure I don't have any leaks before. But we can put the adapters on, right? So guys, generally there's two styles of adapters. Um, see this one, how it has the cutaways. From what all the research and talking to the guy I got these from, which is Mike's Trucks, I'll try to list his info in the description. Uh, it's who I got the wheels and the adapters and everything from. He is very well versed in doing this swap. Um, this one is the one that goes in the back. See how it's a solid ring? And that one with the cutaways should be the one for the front. Now, don't quote me on that. We're, this is the way I'm gonna try it though. So I'm gonna go ahead and just slap this thing on here. I am gonna use some red Loctite on the stock bolts. I believe we're gonna use the stock bolts on this and um, just red lock tight those on so they don't we don't have any issues with them coming loose. Now, when I talked to him, he said I torque those to 140 and I also torque the big guys to 140, which will be a little later on in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those on, get some red lock tight on them. This thing will just set, it's hub centric. So it'll set on that center sleeve we're not supporting anything by the lug nuts. So it's just really well made. Um, and look, he just put some paint on it to keep it from kind of rusting, but these are steel. Do not buy aluminum. Deal with somebody that knows how to do this. I definitely recommend Mike's. Um, great guy, one man shop, and uh, got me everything I needed as one package. Okay, I take that back. We are not using the stock ones. I've got my red Loctite here, but he actually supplied the nuts to put it on. Even better. So we've got, there's gonna be two sizes, obviously the inner, and then you're gonna have a big outer. I actually had to buy a socket for that. It's a 34 millimeter, so, uh, cause I didn't have one. But let's go ahead, get these, the Loctite on them and get them snug down to 140 foot pounds. 
So you're probably wondering like, how are you gonna get 140 on them with no wheel? Well, this is my plan here. I've got a couple of the big 34 millimeters, like I said, that hold the wheel on. Um, got those in place and then I've got my pry bar to give me some leverage. Now I ran them down with my impact and it's pretty strong, but I'd still like to double check here. Well, the good news is, Cohen came out here, we bled the brakes. Um, so we're good to put these wheels on. And this is really kind of the most exciting part of this whole endeavor is uh, actually getting the wheels on for the first time. I kind of test fit them all ago and uh, just to see, but guys, look, you gotta basically beat these things on here. Especially the inners. So, here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do. I noticed there was a video of a guy who was kicking them on, and now I see why he was doing that because they, they don't necessarily set. It's a really tight fit on that hub. Still not even close. Getting there. Boy, there is not a lot of lip for that outer wheel to set on, but maybe it doesn't need much. By the way, guys, make sure you got jack stands. I was doing this earlier with it on the jack, which is a terrible, terrible idea. And as you get a bit closer, there we go, you hear that? We're starting to bottom out. I think as we put the outer on and start to cinch things down, um, it'll probably pull it in. In fact, I don't know, a guy may be able to, I don't wanna, I don't wanna screw anything up, so I don't wanna try to run down something to try to pull it in right now, but it seems pretty uniform. Golly, it looks sick. So now we got to put the outer on. So he labeled these inner and outer for us. Um, put it on the tire sticker. Obviously, guys, the dish goes out. Otherwise, it wouldn't go on. But they're not the lightest things. I'll tell you that. So if we ever get a flat, probably just leave it on the side of the road forever. You're not ever be able to get it home. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. There's supposed to be a ring that goes here uh, that we gotta put on. And the reason we have to do that is because the center lip won't hold uh, on these the way the machine, they won't hold a, a center cap. And so if you're wanting to run a center cap, which we are, uh, you're gonna have to do something to make this happen. I'm gonna run a couple of these down. I guess it helped cause going the right way. Anyway, I'm gonna run a couple of them down, see if we can get that wheel to seat. There we go. That makes me feel a little better. We'll run uh, maybe one in each corner down, like one, two, three, four. And then uh, we'll pull it back off and we'll get that piece into place because like I said, we gotta have that to hold the center cap. So ran these down so we could seat the wheel, if that makes sense. But like I said, they, this won't hold, the way these wheel, wheels are machined, they won't hold a center cap. So what you have to do is you've got to put this guy in and not only that, you have to kind of square it up because this is what, this is what your center cap snaps in. Go grab a center cap. I don't remember, I don't know if it's inner or outer. I think, I think this is the outer. And the reason I think that is because it's so freaking shiny. Um, so I think there's two different sizes of caps, isn't there? Or are they all the same? So I think how this works is, guys, I think it goes on the inside actually first, like this, right? And that bolts on with your wheel. 
Okay, there's no other way. The, the front ones are gonna snap in, I believe, um, but the back ones have to go in like this. So if you don't wanna be going down the road and it looking like this, you're gonna have to spend some time here to um, make sure that they're centered, okay? Um, you may still get some variants, but you don't want it to look like this while you're going down the road. That'd look really freaking stupid. As you can see, we've got it on there. Um, actually, guys, the center lines up pretty good um, with the center of the wheel. Just, I guess it just doesn't have anything to hold it. So we're going to go ahead and torque these things now. Um, 140 foot pounds is what he told me would be, would be sufficient. Um, same as what we did the inners earlier. The, the little, it's hard to believe those little guys are holding these on, you know? I mean, this is just for the, you know, because they only come in this size, but um, <laughs> it's just weird to think that you got eight lugs holding it on underneath there, and these are basically uh, kind of dummies. lug nut covers on yet. I'm going to torque this down. I'm going to have to have a pretty good extension, I think. Um, and I actually probably going to have to put the other set on in order to torque it because I think it's going to spin. So uh, I'm going to go slap the other set on. I won't show you guys that. We're going to do the exact same process. And then uh, we'll set it down on the ground and get it torqued and see what it looks like. All right, so now we got it on the ground. Man, it looks, it looks sick. No doubt, and that looks good, but we're going to torque them. I already torqued the other side. Cohen's putting the center caps on. He chose to go with uh, some dorky looking cone caps. I don't really care for them, but they're pokey caps. You know, so I don't know. I'll show it to you here in a minute. We're going to put the, I'm going to go ahead and torque this down to 140. That side went a little further than I thought. You know, I thought my impact would probably hammer them down, but I still got um, some movement out of the torque wrench. So we're going to go ahead. I like to go around them twice, guys. I'm just one of those people that likes to double and triple check my stuff. So we're going to go around it twice and uh, get those uh, clown hat caps on there. All right, I got all torqued down. Got these clown hats to put on. Um, check this out. Got the spikes, spike caps. What do you think of that? Let me know in the comments down below whether you like the spike caps or I think it looks dumb. He's afraid they're going to fall off. I, guys, look, there's no inertia on the outside of this. I mean, unless you're going to a corner at 100. And this, I don't think I'd want to be in this corner at 100. Never know. Um, but they do, you know, look, regardless of what cap you go with, whether you go with the standard just lug nut looking cap or like these, it does clean up the look. You know, you don't want your nuts showing. <laughs> so, I'm going to cover your nuts. If that makes sense. All right, I'm going to get all these on. We're going to step back and take a look at this thing. I'd like to, it's, it's actually got, there's snow on the ground. Now, I'm going to take you guys outside in this video. And uh, even though we're just done with the back, um, you know, we still got, we still got the front to do. We got a lot ahead of us. But let me get these on. And like I said, we'll step outside or maybe get it repositioned in the shop where we can get a further stand back view of it. Okay, we got it pulled out. Um, look guys, you would not believe this, but we had about six inches of snow yesterday. But it came early and I think it's all gone. There may be some like in the corner of the house up there in the, on the roof and stuff in the shade, but guys, it is looking sick. Uh, brakes are working good, no leaks on the floor back there. Uh, no leaks on the inner barrels of the wheels, so we're good there. And we've got a nice upgraded set of brakes. A pretty set, although you can't see them. The, should I have spent the time to paint them? I don't know. I feel better about it, that they're painted. And uh, man, this I just can't wait to get this thing dropped in the front. So that is our next step. I think for the most part, guys, the back is officially finished for now. Um, yeah, we've got a little ding in the bumper that I may replace down the road. We need to get a spray in bed liner. I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Somebody asked about, am I going to cap off the tailgate? Uh, I'm not going to put the factory cap on it. I'm, I'm contemplating some other ideas there though. So, um, 
I love it. I love the look of it. I, I don't love the Cali lean or the Carolina squat. I don't know what a, what a you call that. It is not going to stay like this, guys. So, uh, yeah, we need to move our attention to the front. I'm not sh exactly sure how I'm going to drop the front yet. I've been back and forth. Um, I was originally going to do a spindle and a drop key. I've kind of backed off that and thought about the DJM drop arms. You guys know I'm not a huge A-arm guy, but it's got mileage on it. It needs upper and lower ball joints and bushings. And so I thought, man, we could really knock it all out with just the drop arms if we went that route. So I don't know. I'm still got some, I've still got some stuff to do. We've got to get the DJM cross member. I don't know if you guys can see that cross member right in the middle of the door down there. They make a cross member that's flat, so it gets rid of that because once we get the front low, that thing's going to drag on everything, but I may turn my attention either to the front end. I've got a new bumper, a new lower piece, and my painter has a new upper piece. Uh, I've got some interior parts. I've got door handles. Guys, we may turn our attention to that next. I'm not really sure, uh, but hopefully you guys are enjoying this build. This thing is going to look absolutely ridiculous when we get it all finished. That is for sure, uh, and it's came a long ways, and what I feel like is a short amount of time. I know I've, it's kind of been drug out, but uh, there's a lot going on here, so a lot to do, but if you are enjoying it, like I said, smash the thumbs up. Go down there and subscribe if you're not already subscribed, guys. There's a lot more coming on this and other stuff. Of course, while you're down there doing all that, ring that bell notification. That will notify you every single time we drop a new video. And stay tuned to see what we work on next.